Let's talk about the thermal dynamic stability of the nucleus. The first concept we're going to introduce is actually to know how to calculate the things called a mass defect. Mass defect was defined as the difference between actual and hypothetical weight of your atom. For example, so helium 24 has actual mass of 4.0015. AMU, and then you want you to calculate the mass defect. This is actually one of the type of questions you are going to see a lot in this chapter. The questions provide you a actual mass of this specific atom. But from here, you can also calculate the hypothetical mass of this atom because here you know there's actually two protons and then two neutrons from this atomic symbol. So in the very beginning of this chapter, you can see on the rightmost columns, they say it's a thing called the AMU, right? Atomic mass unit. It actually tells you the if you have one neutron, it actually contribute to that much atomic mass unit. In principle, if you actually use the number of neutrons, multiply this value plus number of protons multiply that values to actually be able to calculate the mass in the unit of atomic mass unit for every single atom. So that's the things we are going to do here. So for one single proton, its mass is actually 1.007825 atomic mass unit, 1.008665. So if you calculate this, you should be able to get the mass, the hypothetical mass of your helium. Four, okay? It should be equals to 4.0329 AMU. But if you compare this hypothetical mass to the actual mass, you realize they are not exactly the same. There are some differences between the two mass. Right? And that difference is so called the mass defect. Okay, so the mass defect is simply equals to 4.0329 minus 4.0015. Then you're going to get a value of 0.03148 AMU. Okay, so let's actually so called the mass defect. So this mass defect, eventually you see some mass loss, right? So where do you go? It actually convert to some energy and release to the surrounding. That is actually why you need to know all these different decays, right? Because those are the ways that they are going to release the energy. And then the cost of that releasing energy comes from the mass loss. The equation that combines these two things together is the most famous equation. So this actually the things that connect the mass defect to the energy. E equals to mc squared, and then you can write this delta E equals to delta m times c squared. Delta m is actually the mass defect that you can just calculate it. C is a speed of light, and then it's going to be a constant, 2.99 times 10 to the eighth power, meter per second. Again, these things will be provided. So you don't need to actually memorize this value, but you need to know the C is actually the speed of light. The delta M need to have a unit of kilogram, so that your delta E has a unit of joule. So right now the things you calculate is actually, you know the mass defect is 0.03148 AMU. So let's not kilogram. So before you can actually put this number in here into actually do one more conversion. So 1 AMU is going to equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilogram. This will be provided by you to do this conversion before you can plug it into the equation. With all the things in mind, then you know your delta E for this case is going to equal to your delta M is 0.03148. This is AMU, right? You want to convert into kilograms, so you need to multiply 1.66 times 
times 10 to the negative 27. Okay, so this will actually give you the mass in kilogram. And then you can actually multiply your speed of light 2.99 times 10 to the 8th power. Don't forget to square it. So once you put this all correctly, then you are going to get a number of 4.39 times 10 to the negative 12 joule. Okay, and those are the binding energy of that mass original actually existing on your atom when they lost it. This is how much energies they are going to release. And that's actually how you associate your mass defect to the binding energy of the mass.